Hi there, my name is Will, and today I'm going to walk you through our brand new feature, apps, that allow you to build custom UIs for your workflows. Apps allow you to use Kestra as the backend for custom applications. In this case, this means that your flow acts as your backend and your app acts as your frontend, allowing non-technical users to engage with your workflows. Within each app, you can specify a number of different blocks for your front end. This could be a form for data entry, output displays, approval buttons, and markdown blocks, giving you flexibility on how you want your app to display to users. Now, there are two types of apps. The first type of form apps for starting workflows. Typically, these are used for like requesting data where you're going to pass it some inputs, press go, and it's gonna return a file or an output that you can use. The second is an approval app. Now this is useful if you need to request resources and someone needs to approve it to resume and finish the workflow. Now there are a number of benefits to using apps that allow your workflows to extend beyond just Kestra. Apps can be useful for IT help desks where tickets need to be created when new requests are made, or maybe manual approval when resources are requested and you need someone to come and approve that to be able to allow the workflow to finish. Or data entry, simply you need someone to upload a CSV file and it will be processed into your data warehouse using Kestra. There are tons of ways that you can use apps within your workflows and I'm gonna walk you through a number of examples of apps in action. Here I've got a simple workflow called My Flow. Now this has an input called user and it's gonna simply log that input to the logs. Uh, I can simply easily execute this inside of Kestra here to see that it's gonna say hello world based on of the input, we can click on logs and see that. Now I can now turn this into an app to give me an easier interface for passing that input. So let's do that. If I click on the app screen, I can create a brand new app and then I can configure it from here. Now, just like our workflows, apps are configured in YAML as well. And as you can see here, we've got some documentation on the right and the information for our app on the left. Now I'm going to change this to an app suited to our workflow. Now here, the layout of our workflow tells you what it should display when it's first opened. It also will tell us what it's gonna display while it's running and then what it's gonna display when it is successful, meaning you have control over what the app does. When I save this app, I can now view this app in a separate tab here where it's going to ask me to enter in the input for the input user. And when I press execute, we see it's waiting for the logs and then it produces the output as we'd expect, giving us a much more user-friendly interface for being able to run the workflow, but without having to deal with any of the management of the workflow. We can also see a bunch of examples in this repository that I definitely recommend checking out. So let's have a look at another one. I have a flow here called get data. Now this is a common use case of being able to request data using an app and then being able to receive that as a download in the app. So here we're gonna ask for a select field, which is gonna ask us what type of data we'd like to download and a start date so we can get a specific period of time. And then all this is going to do is then simply then pass that data to a URL and then produce an output here, which will be a file. So this is a perfect use case for an app. Now again, I can press on the apps page and press create. Now here I have an app ready to go. Now, as you can see here, it's got a number of different blocks. And if you wanna learn more about how to build your apps, I'd recommend checking out our dedicated guide. I can save this app here and then I can view this in a new tab. And as you can see here, this time I have the option to use my select here. So I can say, I want to get data for employees and I wanna see that from the 1st of December. When I press submit, it's running, I can see some of the logs, and then it gives me this nice download button and the option to preview the data without having to even interact with the workflow. So very, very convenient. And because apps are custom made, this one has the option to create a new request, whereas the previous example app that we had did not have this. So I can now easily run this again. I can say this time I want to get stores data, and when I press submit, we'll get the same data here. Very convenient. For my last example here, we have a request resources workflow. So this is a good example of where you would want an approval app, something where you need someone to come and manually approve at a certain stage to let the workflow finish. And as we can see here, this workflow is asking for a number of resource types and permissions for some cloud resources. And we can see all of that here, and they're also using conditional inputs to make it a little bit easier. When I press execute, we'll see that when I select different resources, 
then we get different inputs display on our screen. Now, when we scroll down to the tasks, we can see that the first task is going to download a file, followed by sending a Slack message asking us to approve the next stage. After that, we have a pause task, which is where we're going to need some sort of approval to resume the workflow to allow it to finish. And on resume, we have a number of inputs, which is where the app comes in quite handy. Now, something to point out here is we're able to use this expression here called app link to be able to dynamically add a link to our app in a Slack message that means someone can go in and approve it without even having to touch Kestra's workflows. Now for this to work, we're gonna to need to create an app. So let's head over to the apps page and press create. Now when I press save, we'll be able to then view our app here and we can see that I can now select the permissions. Those inputs are then conditional and I now get the access permissions. I can say I need admin access, I need it by Friday and I need access as my message. Now when I press submit, we can see that it's processing. We can now say that it's asking to whether it should approve or reject this. And we'll see that in a Slack message that I have available here, we can see in this Slack message, it's given me a link here to be able to approve or reject this workflow. So here I can approve it. I can say all good on my side and then press approve here. And we can now see that this is going to finish no problem and produce us some data at the end to give us the access that we need. So this is just an example of where an approval app can be very helpful in getting you access without someone having to then dig through your workflow and do it that way. Before apps, previously when you did this, you would have had to go to your workflow, specifically go to the execution overview. I can give you a demonstration of that actually. When I pressed, previously you'd press approve. When it gets to that approval stage, you'd have to go to overview and then press resume and pass in the new inputs for that next stage. Whereas now with the apps, you get a much nicer view with this new screen here. So this should hopefully make that user experience, especially for non-technical users who are simply just approving resources a much better experience. So that gives you a quick overview of how apps will make your workflows more user-friendly with custom UIs. We'd love to hear in the comments below how you're gonna start using apps and don't forget to join our Slack community and give us a start on GitHub.